Hey everyone, I'm Dustin, and today I'm gonna to introduce you to the newest, lowest step-through e-bike on the market, the simple step-through electric bike by 630. Stick around. So today I'm introducing you to the simple step-through electric bike from 630. This is the lowest step-through e-bike to hit the market, and I am excited to bring this to the public because this is gonna be one of the, not only the lowest step through, but one of the safest e-bikes to mount and dismount because of how low the step through frame is. So let's get right into it. You can see on the frame, what we've done here is we've brought the tube for the step through actually lower than the crank. Typically the crank, the lowest point of the frame is gonna be even to the crank here. But in this situation, we've dipped it even lower to make this step through height a 10 and a half inches. So you can easily get your foot over and onto the bike. Simple step through, pun completely intended. Now, the other beauty of this, why we've moved these pedals up is so when you turn, you're still gonna have ample clearance for that pedal to get, um, to get over the ground. If you have those pedals too low, and I've seen this on some other bikes that have a low center of gravity or a low step through, if you don't have those pedals up, you're gonna hit the ground when you make a sharp turn. So in this situation, we've lowered the step through and we've raised the pedals to create a very safe riding situation for this e-bike. Now, in addition to the step through, this also has an ergonomic riding position. So mount like this, get on, you can see I'm in a perfect upright riding position. The handlebars swoop into your body so you're nice and relaxed and it's um, no tension on your back, your upper back, your lower back, your shoulders, your elbows. I can be super relaxed as I'm riding. And moving on to the other elements of it, I'm gonna go ahead and swoop around. We're gonna take you on a little ride here because I wanna walk you through everything about this low step through e-bike while we're actually moving. Now, it also comes equipped with a throttle and pedal assist. So three options here. You can ride it like a regular bike, you can ride it with the throttle, or you can utilize the pedal assist. In addition to that, if you should choose to ride like a regular bike, it has a seven speed derailleur. So you're gonna have seven speed external derailleur, just like on a normal bike, that you can shift right here, um, which is also utilized while you're in pedal assist. So, this is gonna be really cool in pedal assist as well because depending on how fast you wanna go with the pedal assist on, you can go ahead and shift your gears uh, basically lower or higher. So if you're wanting to go slower, keep it in pedal assist one, keep the gears in one. As you go faster, move your gears on the bike up to match your pedal assist. So let me go ahead and take you for a ride here. You can see I can push my throttle and I'm off and running, or I can go ahead and do the pedal assist. Now this is 500 watts of power and that 500 watts is gonna be ample to take you up, um, you know, decent sized hills. It's gonna get you up to 20 miles an hour with just the throttle and 28 miles an hour in pedal assist. So that's a lot of power. Truth, truthfully, about enough power for most riders out there. Now I'm 215 pounds and I'm gonna take you guys to tackle a little hill right here. Actually, it's not that little to be honest with you. We'll show you what it looks like. And I'm gonna show you how I do it with ease. Now, talking about the battery back here, it's a 10.4 amp hour, 48 volt battery. It's gonna last you anywhere from 30 to 50 miles um, in pedal assist and about 20 to 50 in throttle. Now, why the large range? Why the crossover of the two? It really depends on how you ride this e-bike. Are you gonna go full throttle the whole way? Are you gonna be in pedal assist? Are you gonna use a combination of the both? Also, when you're in pedal assist, are you gonna be in level one or level five? If you're in level five, the battery's gonna run out much quicker. The other factor that really, really plays into the battery life is the weight of the rider. A rider that's 140 pounds is gonna get more distance out of their battery than somebody who's 250 pounds. So, that's why it's such a large variance. However, those are our sort of published ranges that we think, generally speaking, you'll get. And also there's, there's strategies to also ride your e-bike should you want to prolong the life, which is basically keeping in a lower pedal assist, not using throttle as much, 
things like that. Now we're gonna show you this hill right here. I wanna show you again, I'm 215 pounds. I just wanna show you how easily I can get up this hill and pedal assist with rare, like barely exerting myself. Let's go for it real quick. Get into the, pa the bike lane here. Okay. So I don't know if you can shoot again straight ahead. This is a pretty substantial incline. I really don't have to exert much at all to get us up this hill. I mean, you can see, honestly, I wouldn't do this normally, but I can just kind of be relaxed here. Um, I'm just casually pedaling and I'm letting the bike do a lot of the work. So the 500 watts of power is gonna be great, like I said, for a lot of different size hills. And also, I've heard this from a lot of people, the 500 watts gives you a substantial thrust when you get going. So I really only recommend more than 500 watts of power if number one, you're a heavier rider, or number two, you're gonna be doing very severe hills very, very frequently. Otherwise, I feel that you're just gonna be paying for a lot of motor size that you probably won't need. Now, I wanna show you the best part about this step through e-bicycle is this right here. When you come to a stop, it's just the beauty of stopping and how you can just get off like that. So simple, so easy. The other thing I always say, safety. For, for whatever reason, if you'd have to get off the bike, bail off the Z-bike, you can just, you can actually get your leg through and pull the bike away should you need. You know, if you have a higher tube up here, um, even some step-throughs have higher tubes. They might classify themselves as step-throughs, but they're not true step-throughs. That, that bar could be up to 20 inches high. It's gonna be a lot more difficult to bail on the bike should you need to. Now let's circle back down this hill just to show you the braking power. Now it has a front and rear disc brakes as well. And I just wanna point out if you do hear squeaking, that's the cameraman not, not coming from our uh, simple step through e-bike here. But you can see, I could stop, like let's just, Okay, right now I'm up to 10 miles an hour, I'm up to 12, and I'm just gonna demonstrate to you, okay, we need to stop. And I come to a complete stop. So there's definitely ample stop stopping power. And I'm 215 pounds on a downward slope here, so if it can stop me, it can definitely stop a lot of riders on this decline. The other benefit is we've got the uh, 1.95 inch tires on this bike. So it's great because it's a, it's a not super fat cruiser tire, but it's a fatter tire than a typical road bike. So it's gonna give you more of a cushy ride and still provide you with ample balance. Um, you know, too thin of a tire, it's not gonna take the bumps well. It's also not gonna give you as much balance. I'm gonna go ahead and pull up to a stop right here. And again, just very simple and easy to mount and dismount. So this is the simple step through e-bike, simple step through electric bike from 630, a low step through electric bike for adults, seniors, you name it. If you have any other questions, oh, actually, I take that back before I get into this. I just want to show everyone really quick what our display looks like. So. Actually, let me make this easier on you, Mr. Cameraman. There we go. So this is our display. Now we've tended to, to like to keep our displays a little more simple. You can get middle displays. Now the display isn't going to affect the performance of the bike. It's simply an aesthetic thing. And sometimes you can, actually with this display, you're getting all of the same information that you would get on a larger display. You're getting your miles per hour. You're getting the level of the pedal assist, which is set up here. You're getting an odometer here, which can be reset. You can do trip odometer or your total odometer. And then you've also got your battery life right here. In addition to that, actually, just to point out, I didn't demonstrate this, but the battery is removable. There's a key slot. You can pop the battery out the back. It makes it really convenient if you're taking this bike to work. You can bring the battery in your house. Uh, or you can charge it in a different location. You can charge it while you're in a store. You can charge it while you're at the office and just pop it back in. 
or you could keep separate batteries, keep double batteries, so you can easily change them on a ride. It's just nice to have this easy rear access so you can um, get the battery in and out as you so choose. Also, if you wanna ride this as a regular bike, you can take the battery out, reduce the bike weight by eight pounds, makes it really easy um, to ride it as a regular bike now because you're gonna decrease the weight. So that about covers it now for the Simple Step Through Electric Bike. If you have any other questions about this, please contact us, the team at 630.com, call us 310-982-2877, or comment below, we'll always get back to you. You can check this out on our website, 630.com. And if you're in the market for an e-bike and you don't know what you like, take our proprietary body fit quiz on our website, answer a few questions about your body and your life, and we'll recommend the perfect e-bike for you. Lastly, we have a test ride your e-bike policy for 30 days. If you don't love it in 30 days, send it back. No questions asked, no money out of your pocket. In addition to that, before you buy, jo join our Facebook Peddlers group and download our app. Two great places to connect with existing 630 riders. Ask them questions, see how many miles they're logging on their bike so you can get comfortable buying before your purchase. And after you buy, be a part of those groups, post photos, make friends. It is a ton of fun. So I'm going to continue my ride on my simple step through. But as always, don't forget, it's your journey, your experience. Enjoy the ride. Hey everyone, I'm Dustin, CEO of 630. And today we're gonna do a sizing video with our simple step through electric bike. And we've got riders from five foot to six foot two. And we're gonna show you how they fit on this e-bike and how we can custom adjust it to their body height and weight. Stick around. Okay, I'm here with our first rider, our four foot 11 rider, and what was your name? Bryn. And Bryn, what's your arm length and inseam? My arm length is 17 inches and my inseam is 29 inches. 29 inches, and how much do you weigh? I weigh 105 pounds. Okay, if you wanna to try to step on and see if you can fit on the bike. Okay, so you can see with Bryn, she can't get her feet down. Now, can you get on your tippy toes on your right foot at all? Yeah. Little bit, okay. So we have the seat already in the lowest position and the handlebars could go a little bit lower, but actually the handlebars don't look bad for where she is. So she could maybe make it work uh, if she's athletic and this is okay for her. Ideally, I think for a four foot 11 rider, we'd have the seat be a little lower. So let's go ahead and move up to our five foot rider and see if it's a fit for them. Okay, now we're here with our five foot rider. What was your name? Sandy. Sandy, and Sandy, how uh, long are your arms and what's your inseam? 19 inches Okay. and 28.5. 28.5, and how much do you weigh? I'm 120. 120. Okay, if you wanna go ahead and try to step on Okay, so not too bad. How do you feel? Do you feel okay, comfortable, a little too high? It's a little bit too high. Can you get your right foot down when you're on the seat? Can you put your right foot down on the ground? So she's barely up on her tippy toes. Again, um, for five foot riders, you can see what's interesting is Sandy actually has a shorter inseam than our 4'11 rider, but maybe has longer legs. So she's able to almost fit. She's up on her tippy toes. Everything else is adjusted pretty well. So my recommendation for Sandy or someone five foot, it's gonna be on the border. If you have an inseam, I would say uh, 30 and above or 29 and a half and above, you'll probably be okay. Um, anything less than that, you're gonna be on your tippy toes. She could make it work, but to be safer, a little shorter would be ideal. So let's move up to our five foot one rider. Okay, now we're here with our five foot one rider. What was your name? Teresa. Teresa, and Teresa, how, um, how long are your arms and your inseam? My arms are 22 and my inseam is a 30. 30, and how much do you weigh? Uh, 130 pounds. 130 pounds. If you wanna go ahead and try to step on, we'll see if we can get it fit perfect for your body. And can you slide onto the seat? Perfect, so that actually looks like a Good fit, so 30 inch inseam. Let me see your right foot on the ground too. Can you put your right foot down? So she's up on the balls of her feet, which is okay. You wanna be like that to have good leg extension. And we have the seat all the way down. So I would say it's a fit for Teresa. How do the handlebars feel? The handlebars feel good. 
And you can see we've got our back nice and upright, our arms are relaxed. So I would say at five foot one, we've got a fit with the 30 inch inseam. Let's move up to our five foot two rider. Okay, now we're here with our five foot two rider. What was your name? Jerry. Jerry, and what's your arm length and inseam? My arm length is 19 and my inseam is 32. And how much do you weigh? 120. 120, okay, if you don't mind stepping on, we'll see if we can get a good fit for her body. Okay, let me see. High. Too high for you? Yeah. Okay, we can go ahead and lower the seat, so go ahead and get off. Oops. Okay, let's go ahead and tighten the seat all the way. There we go. All right, go ahead and give that a try. We've got the seat all the way down. Yeah, that feels a lot better. Okay, good for you? Yeah. I think, I mean, we could bring it up a little bit more, but if Jerry's comfortable with that, then we'll leave it. How about the handlebars? They seem a little high, no? A little high. Okay, so let's go ahead and lower this down just a touch. Yeah. Better? Better, yeah. Cool. Perfect. Feels good? Feels comfortable? Yeah. 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 All right. We've got a fit on our five foot two rider. Let's move up to our five foot three rider. Okay. Now we're here with our five foot three rider. And what was your name? My name's Rohini. And what is your arm length and your inseam? My arm length is 15 inches and my inseam is 28 and a half inches. And how much do you weigh? 135 pounds. Okay, great. If you want to go ahead and step on, we'll see if we can make a perfect fit for your body. Can you slide on? Okay, and you're able to get, okay. So again, the interesting thing with inseams and the fit is it doesn't necessarily depend on height. So Rohini has a 25, 28 and a half inch inseam. She's a fit, she's up on the balls of her feet. Um, I think she could have good control over the bike. One thing I think we could maybe do is tilt the handlebars up a little bit just to make it a little more comfortable. So let's see, how about, would that be better or worse? Yeah. Okay. And again, I'm adjusting for comfort. So we got her back nice and upright. Her arms are relaxed. We've got her in a great ergonomic position. How does that feel for you? Yeah, feeling comfortable. Perfect. So we've got a fit for our five foot three rider. Let's move on to our next rider. All right, now I'm here with our five foot four rider. What was your name? Deidre. Deidre, and Deidre, what was your arm length and your inseam? My arm length is 19 and my inseam is 31. 31, perfect. And how much do you weigh? I weigh 130. 130. Okay, if you can go ahead and step on, we'll see if we can adjust for your body. Okay, perfect. So interestingly, again, now she's a little bit more on her toes than our five foot three rider. And I will say the measuring of the inseams isn't an exact science. So uh, it's possible from one seam, inseam to the next that the measurements could be also user differences and how they take the measurement. But she's up on her tippy toes um, or towards the front of her foot. I would say it can work for her. Um, the handlebars, everything else seems to be adjusted okay. How does it feel for you? Do you feel like you'd have control of it? Yeah, I feel like I could take off. Okay. <laughs> And we've got her back upright. Her arms look nice and relaxed. I'm actually not gonna touch anything on the adjustments. So we've got a fit here at five foot four. Let's move up to our five foot five rider. All right, now we're with our five foot five rider. And what was your name? Alicia. Alicia. And what was your arm length and your inseam? Arm length was 17, inseam was 30. Inseam was 30. And how much do you weigh? 145. 145. All right, if you don't mind, try stepping on to the bike. There we go. Okay, so she's, and are you sitting all the way down? Yep, okay, how does that, looks like we could probably raise the seat a little bit, handlebars look okay. Mm -hmm. So if you wanna get off for a second. Sure. So we've got the four easy adjustment points and you can easily raise and lower the seat right here. So we're gonna go ahead and pull that up just a little bit. So she'll have good leg extension on her down pedal. And then you just clamp that down right here. Okay, go ahead and try that. Okay, 
We got her up on the tippy toes. Not Actually, that's good, on the ball of her foot. We could lower it a little bit if we wanted to. Do you feel okay, comfortable like that? Yeah, I okay. can balance and catch myself. Okay, because we want to make sure she's got good leg extension. I could bring it down a smidgen if we needed to. We needed to bring it up just a little bit. How do the handlebars feel for you? That's comfortable. Comfortable? Mm -hmm. Cool. So I think we've got a fit for our five foot five rider. Let's move up to five foot six. Okay, now we're with our five foot six rider. What was your name? Brianna. Brianna, and what's your arm length and inseam? My arm length is 15 and my inseam is 29. Perfect, and how much do you weigh? 130 pounds. 130, do you wanna go ahead and step on? We'll see if we can adjust for your body. Perfect, go ahead and sit down on the seat. And let me see, put your right foot down too. Put your right foot on the ground. Okay, so I've got the seat up about uh, like an inch and a half for Brianna, and I think it's a good fit actually. Um, and how do the handlebars feel? Do those feel okay? Do they look low? No, they feel perfect for me. Feel mm -hmm. good? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, her arms look relaxed. Her back is nice and upright. Feet are down, so she has control. I think we've got a good fit for our five foot six rider. Let's move up to five foot seven. All right, we're with our five foot seven rider now. What was your name? Salvador Lager. Salvador? Salvador. And uh, what's your arm length and inseam? My arm length is 18 and my inseam is 30. 30. And how much do you weigh? I weigh 181. 181. Uh, perfect. You want to go ahead and step on. We'll see if we can adjust for your body. Go ahead and slide back onto the seat. Okay, let me see. Okay, so that seat's definitely too low. You can see his feet are flat. We want to make sure he's going to have good extension on the down pedal. So if you can get off really quick, I'm going to raise the seat up for you. All righty. And let's bring that up a good like inch or two, maybe right about there. Okay, go ahead and give that a try. Perfect, I think that's a little bit better. What do you think? It is a little bit better. And how about the handlebars? Do those feel okay? Or let's go ahead and try to loosen this real quick for you. And we've got a four easy adjustment points, so you can go ahead and kind of play with that where it feels best for you. Right about here. Like a little lower, huh? Okay. A little lower for me. No problem. Perfect. So yeah, we've got a nice relaxed elbow, relaxed shoulders. He's in a good ergonomic position. I'd say we've got a good fit for our five foot seven rider. Let's move up to five foot eight. Okay, now we're here with our five foot eight rider. What was your name? Thomas Johansson. Thomas. And Thomas, what's your arm length and your inseam? Arm is 19, inseam is 29. 29, okay, perfect. And if you wanna go ahead and, oh, sorry, well, how much do you weigh? Oh, I weigh 195. 195, perfect. Okay. Do you wanna go ahead and step on? Sure. We're gonna go ahead and see if we can get a fit for you here. Actually, that looks, how does that, height seems pretty okay at that Yeah, height. it seems perfect. Okay, handlebars, they feel low? No, they are absolutely perfect. Okay, there we go. Um, yeah, you can see his arms are okay. His, he's not having to lean forward. His back is nice and upright. And again, I'd like to reiterate, what's interesting is the inseams can really vary by height. So it's a combination of height and inseam that really determines how we adjust and fit, also arm length. So we got a fit for Thomas. Let's move up to our five foot nine rider. Okay, now we're with our five foot nine rider. What was your name? Avis. Avis, and Avis, what's your arm length and inseam? My arm length is 23 and my inseam is 33. Okay, perfect, and how much do you weigh? I weigh 131. 131. Okay, if you wanna step on, okay. we'll go ahead and see if we can adjust for your body. And then if you sit back on the seat, and let me see your feet down. Okay, so it looks a little bit low. Mm -hmm. So if you wanna get off, I'm gonna raise the seat just a touch for you. Okay. And let's try right about there. And again, we have an easy quick release to raise and lower to okay. accommodate all sorts of heights. Go ahead and step on. Oh, you brought it higher, so. Oh, yeah. Is that, oh, I see. Yeah, I yes. like that better actually for okay. you. I think you'll have better leg extension right there. Oh, nice. Um, how about the handlebars? They feel okay, too they, low? They feel pretty comfortable, yeah. Let's go ahead and try. Let me see if, go ahead and grab onto that and they're gonna loosen and now you can play around with what you okay. like. That's too high. That's too low, yeah. This is, this is about right. Okay, perfect, there we go. And again, you have the two adjustment points up here on the handlebars, the raising, lowering, the tilting, so you can find the perfect position for you. And it looks good. We've got her back nice and upright. Her arms are relaxed. So I think we've got a good fit for our five foot nine rider. Let's move up to five foot 10. All right, now we're here with our five foot 10 rider. What was your name? Aaron. Aaron. 
And Aaron, what's your arm length and inseam? Arm length is 19, inseam is 31. Inseam is 31, perfect. And how much do you weigh? I weigh 170. 170? All right, if you want to go ahead and step on. And you can put your right foot down. There we go. Put both your feet down, actually. Mm -hmm. Might be a little tall here. A little too tall? Yeah, I think so. Okay, we can bring it down a little bit. The other thing that honestly impacts the raising and lowering of the seat is also the shoes. And I notice Aaron's got really flat shoes on as well. Really flat, yes. So that's something to consider when you're adjusting is you may actually have to adjust your seat differently for different shoes. So there you go, go ahead and step on. And let's see, put your left foot down. And how's that feel, better? Feels fine. And how about the handlebars? Handlebars seem good. Too low, okay. They seem, no, they seem good. Okay, cool. So he's got a nice ergonomic straight back here. Arms look nice and relaxed. I'd say it's a fit for our five foot 10 rider. Let's move up to 5'11". Okay, now we're with our five foot 11 rider. What was your name? My name is Brian. Brian, and Brian, what's your arm length and inseam? So it is 19 arm length and 33 inseam. Perfect, and how much do you weigh? I'm 155. 155, all right, if you wanna go ahead and step on. Sure. and then put your left foot down, keep yep. both your feet down for me. Yep. So we need to definitely get the seat up for him. You can see his feet are pretty flat. So if you wanna jump off, yeah. well not jump off, but just come off. Sure. And let's raise this up. <laughs> okay, let's try about right there. And one thing I'll say about adjusting as well is it's also what's comfortable for the rider. So yes, I can adjust, but you wanna make sure that it's right for your body too. So go ahead and try that. Yeah. Got a little bit higher. Okay. Oh yeah, that's great. Is that okay, better? Yeah, that's awesome. And how about the handlebars? They look a little low to me. Yeah, they do feel a little low. Okay, so let's loosen this and then hold on to them. And then you oh, can kind cool. of- Oh, cool. Yeah, I love that. That's great. Okay, perfect. That's nice. Very nice. There we go. So now we got, that. yeah, we can tilt it. We can raise and lower it. So now we got his arms nice and relaxed. He's not stretching. His back's upright. Looks like he's got good leg extension. I'd say we've got a good fit for our five foot 11 rider. Let's move up to six feet. All right, now we're here with our six foot rider. What was your name? Nick. Nick. And Nick, what's your arm length and inseam? My arm length is 20 and then my uh, inseam is 30. Okay. And how much do you weigh? Uh, about 256. 256, perfect. Do you want to go ahead and step on? And go ahead and slide back onto the seat. There we go. How does that feel? Looks pretty good height-wise. Does that yeah, feel okay? I feel pretty good with it. Um, yeah, no issues. Okay, how about the handlebars? Are they a little low? Do you want them up a little more? Yeah, can we try them maybe just a tad higher? Yep. I think overall it feels good, but maybe just a smidge. Yeah, absolutely. So let's go ahead and bring these up. Okay, uh, you've got about four and a half inches of adjustment area where you can bring these up and down. Okay, I think that feels good. Better? Yeah, feels a lot better. And then we can also, let's see if tilting will help him a little bit more. Yeah. So go ahead and grab onto him and they're gonna go loose. So now you can kind of pull them up or down whatever feels better or worse for you. You can bring them even higher or lower. I think like right there feels good. Okay, perfect. Yeah. All right, feels comfortable? Yeah. So you can see uh, we've got a nice, go ahead and put your right foot down. So we've got the, he's got up on the balls of his foot, he'll get great leg extension, back's upright, arms are nice and relaxed. I think we've got a good fit for six foot. So let's move up to our six foot one rider. All right, now we're with our six foot one rider. What was your name? Brendan McManus. Brendan, and Brendan, what's your arm length and inseam? My arm length is 26 and my inseam is 32. 32, and how much do you weigh? I weigh 161. 161, and if you wanna go ahead and step on, we'll see how we can adjust for your body. You got it. And you can keep both feet down on the ground. Yep. You can put your left foot down. Okay, so he's up on the balls of his foot. How does that feel though? Does that feel too high for you? Should we lower the seat a little bit? A little high. So. Okay, yeah, so hop off. There you go. Uh, we'll go ahead and just drop it a little bit. Okay. 
All right, and just clamp that down. Okay, go ahead and try that now. You got it. Wow. Better? Yeah, that's okay. a great deal better. <laughs> and how about the handlebars? Feel really smooth and really comfortable. I okay. really like it. Perfect. Yeah, we've got his back nice and upright. Uh, his arms are relaxed. I think he'll have good leg extension when he's pedaling. So it's a fit for our six foot one rider. Let's move up to our six foot two rider. All right, now we're with our final rider at six foot two. What was your name? Leif. Leif and Leif, what's your arm length and inseam? Arm length is 25 inches, inseam is 33. Okay, and how much do you weigh? Uh, 215 pounds. 215. Actually, I've got the seat all the way down. So let me just raise this up because we know uh, Leif's going to need the seat much higher than that. And you've got a lot of range on the seat here. So I'm going to bring it up to right about there. And I think that'll be pretty good for him. Go ahead and loosen the seat bolt here. So I can clamp all the way down. There we go. All right, go ahead and give that a try. And you can put your right foot down on the ground. There we go. How's that feel? Feels good. Height-wise, okay. Yeah, definitely. Handlebars seem a little bit low, so let's go ahead and raise these up. I'm going to go ahead and bring those up. Bring our bolt down. Bring this down just a little bit right there. And then we'll play with the tilting because you've got these two adjustment bolts. You can find wherever feels good for you. It feels about right, right there. Okay. Feels comfortable? Yes, sir. All right. Cool. So there we go. We've got Leif adjusted at 6'2. His back's nice and upright, arms. Look relaxed. Feels good for you, right? Yes, it does. Yeah. Cool. So we've got a fit for our final rider at six foot two. Stick with us as we recap all this. All right. So we've just shown you the sizing from ri for riders from five foot to six foot two on our simple step through. You can see how easy it is to mount, dismount, and how we can use the four custom adjustment points to dial in the adjustments perfect to their bodies, their height, weight, inseam. It's easy to do. You can easily do it yourself too. So thank you for sticking around and don't forget, it's your journey, your experience. Enjoy the ride. Today I'm going to show you how to operate and ride the simple step-through, low step-through e-bike from 630. Stick around. Hey everyone, I'm Dustin, CEO of 630. Today I'm going to show you how to operate and ride the simple step-through e-bike if you already have it at home, this is a great video to watch to ride it. Or if you're interested in a low step through or already saw the simple step through, I'm going to take you through a full tour on how to ride it, how to operate it, how to shift gears, how to brake, how to do everything. Okay, so first and foremost, let me just take you for a little tour of the simple step through if you're not already familiar with it. If you are, you can go ahead and fast forward through this section onto the next piece. I'm gonna put chapters down below. You should see chapters on the video if you wanna go ahead and forward ahead. All right, so the simple step through e-bike is a very low step through e-bike. It's got an 11 inch step through height where you can just easily walk through the frame. It's got a 500 watt rear hub motor, which is gonna get be very powerful to get you up hills. Uh, around town up to speeds of 20 miles an hour with a throttle only and 28 miles an hour in pedal assist. You have a thumb throttle here that you can use if you don't want to pedal and you have five levels of pedal assist that you can uh, adjust up and down right here on the display and we will get into those in a second. In addition to that you have front and rear disc brakes that can stop really great on a dime and again we'll show you those in a demo and you have your battery here your 10.4 amp hour battery which can take you up to 50 miles on a single charge and i'll show you in a second how easily removable that is so let's go ahead and get you 
uh, or let's go ahead and show you more of the details on the simple step through before we take a demo test ride and I show you exactly how to ride. Okay, first thing I wanna show you is you have your battery located in the back rack here. Now, one very important thing on the battery is underneath here, if you can see, there's actually a switch right here. If this switch is on, nothing on the motor will power up. So it's important that that switch is flipped on, and I'm pretty sure that's on because I just had it in that position. From there, when that is on, you can move up here to your display, at which point you would hold your power button and everything would turn on. So on your initial ride, or if you feel like the battery's not working, it could be a result of that not being turned on. Now I'm gonna turn this off really quick, um, or the switch not being turned on back here. Now, if you want to take a look right here as well, flip this like this. On this side, if you wanna come around, you have a couple things I wanna show you. You have your charging port right here, and this is where you're gonna plug your charger in, and actually I brought a charger out here. And here's your charger, okay? And you would simply just plug this in right here, and it is actually just a regular cable or a regular AC plug. And you would plug that into the wall. Very important, do not stick anything else inside of this. Uh, no forks, no metal objects. You only wanna put your charger in there, okay? Now, that goes in there. When you plug this into the wall, which we're gonna show you in a second here, this light is going to turn red if it's plugged in and the battery still needs to be charged more. This light will turn green when the charging is fully completed. All right. Now, if you wanna walk over here to this bike really quick, because I misplaced the key for that one. <laughs> right here, you have your key and your lock. So when you're riding, you wanna ensure this is locked, okay? So you wanna turn the key like that, at which point you can't pull the battery out if this separates from the controller housing here and the battery, if it's not locked in place, the battery may die. If it's not locked in place, this battery could slide out and you would lose power. Now let me show you what we'll do to charge. Now, to charge it, you can leave the battery in and charge it that way, that is perfectly fine. Or you can unlock it, remove the battery. And now I'm gonna bring this inside with me and then I'm gonna show you how to charge. Okay, so we brought the battery indoors um, just to show you how to charge. So like I said, it's just a normal outlet. I'm gonna go ahead and plug that in right here. And now you've got your charging port right here, okay? And very simple, we're just gonna go ahead and plug this in. Okay, and now that it's plugged in, you're gonna see right here the red light comes on. And if you see when I unplug that, the light is actually off. Actually, no, it's green, sorry. You can see the green there. So once you plug it in and it turns red, that's gonna indicate that it is in fact charging and that light should turn green when it's done. Now, if your battery's very low, it can take about four to eight hours to charge. Um, so don't be surprised if you've had it on the charger for you know three, four hours and it's still not full. So go ahead and leave that. When you're charging, try to leave the battery in a safe area, you know, not by anything that would uh, be uh, that the heat, because the battery will get hot, the charger will get hot. Actually, I'd recommend not leaving that on top of the battery. So charging in a safe space like this, this is a good setup, and we can come back and check at, on it in a few hours, and then get it in our bike and go for a ride. So let's bring this back to the bike, install it, and then I will show you how to operate everything, and we'll take a ride. Okay, so we got the battery back installed. Now I'm gonna walk you through all the electronics. So right here we have our display. And from here, you're gonna hold the power button down and that turns the motor on. Now, if you're in a standstill, not utilizing anything, go ahead and shift your pedal assist level into zero. So bottom button is your minus, top button is your plus. This will raise and lower your pedal assist levels. And if this is in zero, your throttle will not work at all, nor will you get any pedal assist. So if you're riding and you decide you wanna turn the motor off, you can just leave it in zero. That way, if you wanna leave the display on, because you may wanna put it into level one um, in a moment's notice, 
you can just leave it like this. Then when you're ready, you can pop it into one, two, whatever you need to, right? Um, as opposed to just turning it off completely because then if all of a sudden you start going up a hill or something, it's going to take a longer to get, um, to turn it back on versus just to flip it into one. So right here you have your throttle. Now the thing about the throttle, like I said, these, so these pedal assist levels are only linked to the output of the pedal assist. They are not a power indication for the throttle at all. If you have your pedal assist level in one, the throttle will work at its fullest power. The throttle operates like a gas pedal on a car. The harder you push it, the faster it goes. There's an instinct for people all of a sudden when they come up to their bike to just push the throttle. Don't do that. Or at least make sure that it's in zero, at which point the bike will not move, okay? So the throttle, like I said, is a gas pedal. The harder you push it, the faster it goes. So start to just get familiar with giving it a little bit while you ride. And then over time, you can give it a little bit more. But you're, if this is in level one, your throttle will be capable of giving you its max power. Unlike the pedal assist levels, you will not get your max pedal assist level unless you have it in level five, okay? Make sense? Now let's put this back down to zero, okay? Everything else, now let's shift over to the, um, the side with the gears here. Now on this side, you have seven speeds. These seven speeds are not linked to the motor in any way, shape, or form. Form. Now, one thing I also want to point out is I went ahead and turned the motor off completely while we're standing here. My recommendation, and I'll get into a little bit more while we're riding, is before you mount the bike, always have the motor off. Once before you get off the bike, always have the motor off as well. Okay, so now these gears right here are like the gears on a standard bicycle. You would twist this shifter right here to shift your gears up or down. You have seven speeds on the simple step through. And if we can look right down here this is your derailleur right here okay so the gears operate completely independently of the pedal assist levels or anything to do with the motor now you want to try to match up the gears on the bike to the assistance of the of the of the pedal assist as an example if you're in pedal assist 5 you're probably going to want to be in at least gear five, if not gear seven. If you're in pedal assist one, you probably would want to be in gear one, two, or three. So there's no direct correlation. Um, and you can use the gears on the bike without using the motor. If you so choose to have the motor off, you can still use your gears and ride it like a normal bicycle. Now, another thing I want to point out as well, do not shift the gears of the bike, the derailleur, while you're standing still. Only shift those while you're moving. Because in order for the gears to shift, the chain needs to move. And if you shift while you're standing still, the minute you start riding, the chain's going to want to move. It can cause some problems. While you're riding and the chain's already moving and you shift, it moves much more seamlessly and much easier. doesn't create problems and issues. So again, you want to get these two working in together. I'll explain it a little bit when we go for a ride and I'll talk to you about how I'm shifting and what I'm doing. Um, but just know they operate independently. Now you have your brakes here. You've got your front brake is your left brake and your rear brake is your right brake. Um, remember, generally only pull the rear brake if you're gonna pull one brake by itself or pull both brakes together. That's recommended really in general, but try not to just use the front brake that can cause you to possibly flip over um, if you're traveling at very high speed. So front brake is the left brake, rear brake is the right brake. Try to pull both at the same time. Um, things like filling up the air, you can see it's a standard tire. Located on the side of the tire here is the recommended PSI right here. It says 40 PSI. Um, also, these tires are directional which means that there is a certain direction you want them to go. If you ever need to replace your tire, just make sure that you keep the tread facing in the same direction. You can see the little point of this shape here goes forward. That's just important for the traction and the water um, while you're riding. All right, now just a few other things. 
uh, just some operational things. There are some cable connections. If you ever have issues, you can see there's certain points here where the cables connect. Um, if those ever came loose, the motor and things would stop working. Uh, also underneath here, uh, wires feed in through here. And lastly, there's connections underneath these cables up here in the handlebar. So if you ever experience anything and the motor cuts out, you can check underneath here for the connections to see if something by chance came loose. But more than likely, that will never happen. All right, now the other cool thing is the four custom adjustment points for your riding position. So you've got the ability to raise and lower your handlebars with this bolt right here. You can adjust the tilt of your handlebars right uh, with this bolt right here, which is underneath here. So you can find your desired angle. You can also find your desired height. And then on your seat, you can obviously raise and lower with the quick release. You can also loosen these two bolts to find the perfect tilt of the seat that feels best for you as well. And right here, you've got two bolts to bolt on a water bottle holder if you should want to put a water bottle holder on there when you ride. All right, that pretty much takes us through and summarizes the most of the features. Now I'm gonna put a helmet on and take you for a quick ride and just show you and walk you through how I operate, how I shift, how I do things like that as we take a quick little jaunt. All right, so first thing is mounting. Since we have the easy step through, the whole point is to do a little step through to get on here. From there, then I can just slide back onto the seat. Okay, now I've left the motor off till I'm on the bike. I recommend please do that so you don't accidentally hit anything uh, like the throttle and the bike jolts on you. Okay, so now the, the display is on and I have it in level one. I recommend starting as low as possible. Uh, I'll show you really quick too. I like to start with the throttle because it makes it really easy. So if that's the case, start your right foot um, or you can do your left foot, but keep one of your feet in the halfway position on the pedal so you can get a nice, either you leave your foot there comfortable or you can get a nice push off. If you wanna use the throttle, you just ease into it. I'm gonna just do easy and then let the bike go and I can pick up and be on my way. So I like to start like that, but let me just show you if you wanna start with pedaling. So get my pedal up like this, good position. And then it's just like a bicycle. So I'm just gonna push off. After I make a full rotation, my motor kicks in just like that and I'm off and running. Now at this point, I am in first gear and I'm in pedal assist one, okay? So at this point, when I pick up a little speed here when we get out to the street, I'll show you exactly how to shift. All right, so I'm gonna get going here. I'm gonna use my throttle, I like to do that. And I got my foot in the right position, so we're gonna pick up, take off. And now again, I'm in first gear, which I like to start out with, so I can just start pedaling. The pedal assist kicks in. Now I'm gonna upshift to level three, and at which point I'm gonna shift my gears up. Now I've got a good gear and a good pedal assist. All right, now I'm coming to braking, and I'm just gonna downshift back to level one, and now I'm gonna shift my gears back down. So I'm just trying to match the resistance of my pedaling with the level of a uh, pedal assist I have. All right, so when you're coming into a stop, there's a few things I recommend. Number one, if you're using the gears on the bike, get them down to level one because it'll be easier to pedal when you start. And then the other thing too is after you stop, put it into zero. So I'm gonna to come to my stop right here. Once I'm stopped, I'm gonna put my pedal assist in zero just while I'm sitting here so nothing can go wrong. Now, I'm gonna take on this hill right here. Uh, I don't know if the cameraman's gonna come or not, but to do, take on the hill, I wanna make sure my gears are in level one and my pedal assist, I'm gonna put it into level two to start. And then as I start to go up the hill, I'm gonna increase it into level five. So let's just make sure there's no cars coming. All right, and now I'm going to go. 
All right, my pedal assist kicks in. Now I'm gonna put into level five and we're off and running and I'm in gear one right now, okay? Now you can also use the throttle if you so choose. Totally up to you. So I am in gear one, pedal assist level five and I am exerting zero effort whatsoever as I take on this hill. Alrighty. Now you can always switch to the throttle if you so choose. I will say I'm 225 pounds. I'm gonna drain a lot of battery if I use the throttle going up the hills. Okay. Now if I just wanna take a little break, go ahead and switch to throttle. Let the bike do the work. So I'm gonna come into a stop right up here. I'm already in first gear. I'm gonna go ahead and start shifting my pedal assist down. I just put it into zero so I can stop safely and I don't have to worry about the bike jumping out at me at all. So that's really it. That's a simple step through and how to operate it. I'm gonna go back down this hill. Um, actually, we could bring, us, bring you with us if we want. I don't know if that's safe for the cameraman. Yeah, let's go for it. And I'll just show you how I brake down the hill as well. I'm just gonna use both my handbrakes here so I'm starting out again, I'm in level gear one, I'm actually in pedal assist zero. I'm actually not even gonna turn the motor on to go downhill because we're gonna get going fast enough as it is. And you can see I'm engaging both brakes, okay? And anytime you're going down a hill, you wanna be gradually pulling the brakes. You don't wanna wait till the last minute. If you should wanna you know, fly down the hill, that's totally up to you. But I don't recommend doing that gradually keep your brakes engaged the entire way so you can make a nice gradual stop at the bottom. And I'm still going, uh, let's see, 14 miles an hour, 15 miles an hour. All right, now I'm gonna slow down and take this turn. Wait for our camera person. <laughs> All right, so I'm still in level zero. I'm just gonna put it in one. You can, there goes my pedal assist. I'm in gear one. Now I'm gonna shift up a little bit more. Now you could be in any gear you want, even in level one. I just won't recommend being in a, if you're in pedal assist five on flat ground, you're not gonna wanna be in gears one, two, three, or four. You're gonna wanna be in one of the higher gears just to match the cadence of your pedaling with the assist. All right, so now I'm gonna go up to level five and really open it up here. So there we go, level five, I'm in gear seven. And this is when you can start reaching speeds over 20 miles an hour. Got up to 18. All right, pull both brakes. Now I'm just gonna turn around again. And I'll just do a quick throttle demo for you here right now as well. Because if you want to, you can use the throttle um, and not pedal at all. So let's demo that really quick. All right, so here we go. I'm in level five on pedal assist, which we don't need to be. I'm just gonna put it in one and that'll fully engage. And I'm gonna push it and we're off and running. And I'm already up to 10 miles an hour, 13, 14, 16, 18, and come to a stop. And I'll just make a turn right here. I engaged both brakes and we'll make our way back to our parking lot. My one recommendation is if you're navigating in very tight spaces or slow speeds like this, the pedal assist isn't gonna be good because when it turns on, it's gonna give you power, um, which makes it hard to do tight turns. But the throttle's really great if you need to like kind of just, you know, take small turns, kind of ease into it, things like that. The pedal assist is a little bit better once you open it up a little bit more. And 
and I'm still in gear seven, I actually like it to be a little bit harder to pedal. Um, seventh will be the hardest to pedal, one will be the easiest, but the choice is totally yours. All right, now I'm stopped, put it in level zero. Now one mistake I made was I didn't downshift my gears into first gear. I'd always recommend trying to do that if you can. Um, and then mount, dismount by pulling my leg through. I kept, I put it into zero, but you should always turn it off. So now the e-bike's off, everything's safe. Also, if you're gonna leave it off for an extended period of time, flip the battery off as well. Just remember next time you come back to it that you remember to flip it on. So that's how to ride and operate the simple step through e-bike. If you have any other questions at all, please reach out to us, the team at 630.com, or you can call us 310-982-2877. We're always here to answer your questions and help you with everything. And don't forget, join our Facebook peddlers group, uh, our Facebook group, the 630 peddlers on Facebook. You can ask those other riders questions about your simple step through either once you have one or in advance of purchasing and also download our app to track your rides that is a lot of fun so thanks for sticking around and don't forget it's your journey or experience enjoy the ride <laughs>